Well, we'll continue with the topic called the resurrection of the dead. That is according to Hebrews 6 in the first three verses about the six elements of the gospel or the elements or the principles of the kingdom of God and which are supposed to be like a foundation of a horse then the rock upon which we build according to the cornerstone Christ Jesus is a whole apostle ministry is to be uh, made it out through the apostle teaching if there is any so we see that clearly it was like today we when we go to school we have a curriculum am I right so this is a curriculum of uh, believers um, in light of uh, the image race or the uh, um, the the kind of um, you know what is the word it manifests you know so the used by the the New Testament uh, teachers or ministers from Christ Jesus till Paul even Judah the uh, Jude and uh, the authors thereof and all speaking about this as uh, like there's three actually mentioned of this one is like a seed being grown to a fruitful tree in the watering in the some garden or garden or whatever so farmers take care of it basically amen halali husband man so husband tree what's that my English word were shabby so <laughs> I can feel it <laughs> the second one is like a build a horse you know a horse and uh, um, to to have a firm foundation to be laid third it would be like a newborn baby need the spiritual milk to then partake in solid food in order to mature so those three images are all speaking about more than individual growth but actually also have a corporate application um, also emphasize some point the, for observation say that is in the idea of a um, uh, first one is a garden or the vineyard that is a, also an imagery in the Old Testament used especially for the Israelites as a people as a garden for example we know in the Genesis like when Noah saved out of the flood what well, the first thing he did I mean a sense it's in the land he planted the vineyard and right so and um, so all of in Isaiah 6 and other places you're saying that Christ is called the branch snatch out of fire or being a stem out of from the root of Jesse and but it branched it out to become a, a fruitful garden in a sense you know Jesus Christ later on speaking about among the why you are the branches so the second image the third imagery would be or the second imagery would be a horse a horse we know that it clearly related to because uh, in the ancient time like if from Abraham till Moses time God's people has always been wandering they are strangers they never own any land they always pitch a tent they don't have permanent dwelling place so when they go to a land where people begin you know other nations uh, where they become alien strangers in their land amen hallelujah even slaves sometimes in the, in the case of Egypt mm -hmm. and uh, they, they are jealous of those that are able to have a permanent dwelling on uh, own, own land never need to wander again so in a sense they have their own land they can farm the vineyard rather than always being shepherd you know so today we still have those kind of um, cultures you know like Mongolia or other places people uh, people call the nomads, you know, we Nomad. actually call the, you mm -hmm. know, the mm -hmm. North Europe call the Norad, Moran, because those kind of livestock. So, only agriculture and other ways of doing farming, they can have the land. First, they have, have the fruitful land. In those days, we don't have chemical, we're going to modern farmer or machinery technology. So, every <coughs> fruitful land depends on the river source and the uh, the weather pattern. So, mm -hmm. they found those good land. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, 
was it jealous of uh, Nile, the jealous of uh, of Ephraim, it's those, you know, the the blessed place in their time of and nurtured the two great kingdom or two great civilizations on either side, they were called in between. And here God reserved for them the river of Jordan and with it it's a beautiful land there in the in the midst of wilderness, you know. So in a sense that um, we see uh, this picture to to have a land fruitful enough, worth enough for them to generation after generation as a inheritance pass on to the posterity in the, to build a horse. To build a horse never moved again. In those days, you know, people don't build a horse. Still we no, you go to Africa, people do build stone horses, don't, and ride them with bricks. So, can you imagine uh, when flood come, what happened, they all lost everything, right? So, so to build a horse, secure the land, and the family can then cluster together, one another, build around that the horse, and then become a, a community of people. Those are pictures how the people is organized or blessed because normal family they don't even can pass on the children, am right? They lost like in Naomi's case for example, am I? I mean they don't they don't care the land, you know, so they, they can't survive even. So, you know, disease, famine, all kinds of tragedies like are easily cut off the posterity. So cut off a family lineage, am I? So that's why we see the build a horse was often used a picture as a father, a fruitful father, a forefather really in this case, or progenitor on the head of a lineage. Amen, hallelujah, like Abraham was. So to Jacob, now house 12 sons, 12 sons become a big family, 72 <laughs> members of family. Mm. So then 70 in the time also grew to be millions of people. And God said, now it's time to get out here. So, to the land I want to give to you, which is belong to my promise to your forefathers. So then, pick the pictures, they have their land, see, they flourish for a while. Uh, then God said, well, that's not good enough. So he sent a great trial to them in the time of Jazi, for example, they continue being plundered by other people. Major one is Philistines, you know, so a sea people come to plunder them. So, mm -hmm. and um, so we see this um, picture, then God humbled again. Eventually, He raised up a mighty man for one land that is uh, also wise and man of his own heart, that is uh, in the person of King David. And King David was able to subdue all nations around Israel. And there, I think the team mentioned recently about this particular juncture of time where David, when he was settled in the palace, where God gave him palace, he was troubled. He said, well, I, I want to build you a house, Lord, because you have a living shabby tent. Your, worship, your place of worship is almost like incompatible now, so I wanted to honor you first, you know, so. And God sent the prophet Nathan to tell him, no, you, you will not be the one build a house for me, rather your son. Mm -hmm. So that was fulfilled in Solomon's time. In Solomon's okay. time, and he built his house on the foundation mm -hmm. of the rock, where Abraham was ascended with Isaiah to do the sacrifice, am right? So and we're part of that in Abraham's story. We know that is that's where Melchizedek used to reign. Amen. Hallelujah. Then move on forward. We know that's place where um, David uh, was a stopped and the play he had to purchase and the threshold the threshold field, you know, from uh, 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 I think the sites if I don't um, remember right, you know. So basically all this land was marked in particular persons as uh, as very unique encounter with God, but for this purpose that that place was a chosen place and it was a reserved 
for some day, someone, God plays with God's particular chosen um, to build his house. This is a picture of Christ, so more than Solomon. So, uh, so eventually he comes, and the foundation was laid, and material was prepared ahead of time, and the pattern was clearly given, and Solomon was able to build this temple. Now God's people more than have the land, they can bring the sacrifice where the altar and the ark married together as one in terms of worship, and all things that God gave to Moses, gave to Abraham as a pattern. I mean, remember God coming as Abraham, he put him to sleep, right? So he's, he, he, he knows nothing, they say. <laughs> I mean, he, he knows nothing about the ordinance or sacrifice was made. It was, a, it was given to him as a mystery. Amen? He's asleep. The sacrifice was made. He's just bringing it there. He's done. Um, then God brings the son to say, this is very unique. Now you need to pay attention to it. He gave him a lamb, a ram. Mm -hmm. An angel gave him a ram, basically, caught in between the branches. So, so he did the sacrifice, but it was a... Um, were a row and a primitive picture of the real elder of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, where the ark of the Lord was never revealed. In most of the time, God revealed the ark of the Lord through amazing encounters Moses had with God on the mountain top, Sinai, and then come back, bring this pattern down. Amen. Hallelujah. God instructed Moses, said, You have to build these things. Perfectly according to the pattern I give to you. And we later on recognize that the pattern was not necessarily God's throne pattern. And then the pattern on the throne is rather in the angelic realm. It's not the ultimate realm in a sense. It's in the realm. Therefore, the Hebrew, not Hebrew, and other places like a person like Stephen understood what Jesus taught, mm -hmm. said it, it was given by angels, ministered by angels, talking about the new old covenant ministry. And that being said, but Christ has given us a new pattern that is ministered and by by sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And served by Son of God. Making sense to you? Mm -hmm. Given by the Son of God. The Son of God. So in a sense a different race of a service coming about. Amen. So we have a three services here. Three patterns here. One is man, the Levitical order on earth, pattern of the heaven, so in the heaven realms there are angels, amen, and death realms, amen, hallelujah. That's maybe Melchizedek death was a pattern after, amen, hallelujah. Then this order eventually fulfilled through the Son of God, amen, hallelujah. Eventually, in a sense, like Abraham prepared for Solomon's temple, so Mills deck in a sense, in this light, it's internal in the perpetual order, unchanging, but he prepared in terms of revelation at least, or God's increasing fulfillment of his promise, he prepared for the real high priest, that is our, our Lord. That's why when the Lord come, he was uh, anointed to be the high priest. Mm -hmm of the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek is still a type, a shadow, amen? Putting in another order. If I'm making sense to you, I hope it don't confuse you. But the, when Christ came, what he did, he said, I'm gonna raise up a new race of people to fulfill this promise, amen? That being said. Now how he did that, he threw a new race of man. That's a new man. The third imagery is a new man. Amen, hallelujah. A member, many members into this new man. Perfect man, amen, hallelujah. You look at the temple or the tabernacle, he modeled out the man. Man, you have a heart, you have a head, you have a reproductive system, you know, as a gate, amen, hallelujah. Flowing it up, amen, hallelujah. You have uh, two pillars, like a egg, lay eggs, amen. So if Jan says my point, you know, it's a model after a man. In the heart of the heart is the altar, where God's heart approved man's heart. Amen? Hallelujah. Me as one. But in the ark, or in the holy holies, where God's mind 
become a man's mind. The will become one will. Amen. Hallelujah. The one counsel in a sense. Amen. In terms of purification. Amen. That is the sinning of life, the flow of life, the blood of life. It become also one. God said, the blood will purify and sanctify your whole life. Then you can enter into my council. Now that being said, it's a great mystery through that, through, through through the design of God. I don't want to expound it. We may write it or teach it later. But in these three things, we see a land flourish like a garden or like a farm, you know, like a vineyard, give a provision for you to have a house, permanent dwelling place. And then the permanent dwelling place that God, God said, I will dwell with you. You know, I'll bless you. I will, you prepare a house for me, prepare a dwelling place for me, I will dwell with you. Now he made man become his people, a kingdom priest representing him. Now this was evidently not fulfilled, continually not being discarded, continually considered as if it's a, it's a mystical thing, it's a legendary thing, or it's a religious thing. Uh, but Christ said, I want a spiritual host built by a spiritual people, third by spiritual sons of God. Amen? Maintain a spiritual reality or spiritual order on the day of the mission take. Amen? Hallelujah. Into a spiritual reality that is the kingdom of God on earth that is in heaven. Now, in order to do that, he began to choose his uh, chosen people. Call his chosen people, I choose them, and they set them apart from this, for this very, very calling, this very purpose. He, in this process, he did many ordinations. We touched on three of them. One is uh, three baptisms. The man he prepared, sanctified a man, he wants you to glorify man to be this recipient of this honor, this capacity to, to be perfecting this this call, this for reason. The second one would be the um, three that we talking about, the 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 the, the, the three uh, judgments. You know, so man had to be judged. When fulfill all righteousness, judge as righteous. Amen. Has to fulfill all the requirements according to different set in the covenant. Amen. Like I do in different courts. And to be confirmed as blameless, perfect for this world reason. Amen. Hallelujah. So that being said, then with the judgment we're talking about transformation happened. Amen. That means each one you had to die to a certain thing and raise up another thing, that is the glorification, essence, transformation. Metamorphosis means foregoing the old form of life, being resurrected or released into a new form of life. Amen, there are three of them. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. What are three? This is Christ speaking about the three bad and compatible, these are three things. It's compatible also with the makeup of man. Amen, for example, we last few sessions we're speaking about in Christ's eyes, there are certain believers actually spiritually dead. Amen. Has the name of a living, but uh, their life is dead. Why is dead? Because they don't have a touch of a spiritual equation to life, nor have a touch of a spiritual reality to life. So they live in the carnal mind. Amen. As the truth was, amen, in his day, those who rejected him, do you think they will they have a spiritual life, but still worship God? Still performing as if he rewriting his scriptures, rewriting his his traditions, but uh, you are dead. Amen. God said you are more than dead. You are you are, you are stinking to me. <laughs> you, you know, you are, you you are dirty and smelly and dead, and <laughs> messy in the tomb. You know, like a, in the tomb, in the outside your wife, <laughs> while wash, but inside I follow dead in my bones. You know, more than dead man filled. So my point is that now God release us, however, to, to truly believe, sanctify, judge as righteousness, then we have a different glory conferred to us, different transformation can happen to us. So from a man's realm, across the river of angelic realm, three baptisms, and then enter into the realm of glorified sonship. Amen? Hallelujah, that is become 
like Jesus Christ in the image and like in the God. In this, I I'm, I didn't intend to expand this to give you a, a picture. This is the whole setup. This is the promise, Pri premise, premise, mm -hmm. <laughs> premise for the whole construct. Why the six elements in the teaching? And then because Jesus Christ talking about concerning saying, he uses three: conviction of sin. Conviction of righteousness and conviction of judgment. Mm -hmm. Amen. So three elements is basically expansion um, uh, of them. The three things that is meant to be taught and given by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit we are all saying to you. We often think it's about just like a personal or some uh, whatever you know, some flimsy or individualized experiential things, but. What this is saying is a, a fullness of uh, a reality or the truth is the kingdom of God. Amen. Those are building block of a house. You know, you cannot do without. You have all the elements in, of, uh, to form a horse, but still you don't have any pattern what happened. Can you have a horse that someone can dwell in and God can dwell in with you? Obviously not. There has to be a pattern. So what I'm saying is this. Is a pattern, amen. Hallelujah. More than the building elements, it's a pattern, amen. Team, pray for us. Lord, I pray for myself and for each one and for all of your people, Lord, that we would enter into this holy place, a place that you had described as not of this world, yet able to be lived in even while we were in this world. So, Jesus, you prayed to the Father saying, Father, I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but rather that they be delivered from the evil. Mm. And Lord, certainly into, even as we are delivered from sin and death, Lord, into life, liberty, righteousness, mm. and glory. Mm. We bless this process. We bless this truth mm. as that which precedes from the source of your being, mm -hmm. not just a proclamation that you somehow decided because this is something that is the essence of who you are mm -hmm. and what you desire for your people to be as one with you. Mm -hmm. Let it be done to us, Lord, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, how we will look back this then death? What death means? And resurrection to what a kind of body, what kind of glory. I mentioned the glorification, amen, or transformation of our the form of our life or the existence of our life. Now turn with me in Revelation. We build a little contest and turn to Paul and other places talking with this thing. So uh, this resurrection of the dead mainly chapter is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, so there are other places as well, but more there, more well expanded about, especially talking about what a glorification, what it really means. So um, I want to clarify that actually, just like profession in the scripture, how it's a unique meaning, amen? So it's not a more English meaning, per se, we'll subscribe to it. But the glorification also in the New Testament, especially, have two meanings. Okay, so one meaning in the New Testament concept is truly something being transformed into a better existence. In God's light, it means a more honorable, more favored, more prized form of life. Amen. Eventually, we have a His word essence for life. You can think about it. the life not even given to angel but given to his sons a man through Christ Jesus at the firstborn or the first fruits of his life so I'm making sense to you it's element himself imprinted or expressed embodied word become flesh in human life basically making sense to you guys so this is a work that he intended to do and anything against or replaces work the Lord speaking as a spirit force called Antichrist, amen, in opposing or try to replace this ultimate call of God. Hallelujah. 
no one lay hands on Ben little bit. He seems tired, so <laughs> so it's okay. So the lay hands on, pray for God's energy on him, and, mm -hmm. and rest. No pressure, brother. Just to pray for you. Lord, indeed, I do pray for Lord energy for this brother. Lord, not one that comes from Lord any thing of this world, Father, but directly from your spirit, Lord, mm -hmm. to his. Mm -hmm. Lord, that it would permeate from there to his physical body, mm -hmm. Lord, and to his his mind and his heart as well. Mm -hmm. Lord, truly we are aware of Lord the the season he is in that we are all in, Lord, that is Lord can be very stressful Lord, mm -hmm. to each one of us. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that in this light you would encourage him. Mm. Lord, that he would be firmly rooted, mm. Lord, in your spirit in every way. Mm. So I bless him now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's move on. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for all the sacrifice, all the labor you have, Lord. Bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. In 4 chapter of Revelation, let's turn to this. I know I'm going to build much contest now. I'll just give you snippets, try to tie the knots together for you to see the whole. In 4 and 10, I mean in 9 rather, there was the sense of God of seeing new song. John witnessed and the Lamb God unsealed the, the things that are hidden from them. In the said, you are worthy to take the scroll to open the seals, because you were slain with the blood you purchased a man. For God, they were redeemed. What kind of man? What a purchase means? More than they are purchased from something, they are restored back to something. From every tribe, the language, the people, and nation. Now, when they purchase, they become a new people. They're freed, and uh, now you have made them holy. Uh, the one who is holy made them holy. They made them in total to be holy, to be a kingdom, a priest. Or kingdom and the priest of Sarah God. So that's what he made them holy into. To be a holy people, the kingdom, and also to be a ministers a covenant. So here lie last two cultures. They represent two cultures. Kingdom culture and a family culture represent God's household. They may also God in God's household. Making sense to you? So and they will reign through this, they will reign on the earth. That means this culture is an all made culture, so it's an all made order, it's an all made rule or constitution of all things that exist on earth. So so you establish two capacities and so this is a is a chosen people. They were purchased for this purpose. Amen? He paid the price. Making sense to you guys? Now let's, let's go on. So, amen, hallelujah. So when they were able to be saved, and in seventh chapter now, turn with me, in 14. So it said certain people again, so it said it was for the holy people, which said it, these, 14 said it, these, the other was answering him, these are those who have come out of the great tribulation. Now the word tribulation seems to be us is continually being replaced or understand in Matthew 24, the last day the, tr the trouble basically. The word tribulation can be understand in different ways. For example, as I salute to it, it's like in Romans 8, talking about the growing of the whole creation. The final birthday of that groaning. Now the songs come out of it. Amen? Because the songs, the whole creation groaning like a woman in birth pain. Am I right? Great tribulation, great, great tribulation for the birthing of the Son of God. So something's burst. Mm. So we have a wash. So like a travailing. This, yes? Travailing. Travailing, yeah, yeah. No, I was just, you yeah. were talking about tribulation, the different, yeah. and yes. now you're talking about the birthing forth, which yes. is a travail. Travail, right. yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Mm. The same concept, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. And then produce a people. Mm. 
So they have washed the robes. This is the, quality, the, the description of these people. They have washed the robes and made them white in the blood. They were precious. And they clothed in the righteous God, which is Christ Jesus. And they are before they were entering into a different role. Okay? Before they were unclean, right? Not the evil to overcome the evil one. Okay? They don't have access to this realm. Right now they established this realm as a priest God and people God. They are before the throne of God and serve him in the day and night in his temple. Amen? Okay? They serve him before his temple. And who sits on the throne and will spread his tent around them. <laughs> that is a tabernacle, evidently. Mm -hmm. so, Making sense to you, and never again do hunger. This is a kind of different kind of description, but you you understand there is a reality here. There's a service. There's, there's a ministry here. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want this crush, dash, mm -hmm. certain foolish, so-called spiritual mind, mm -hmm. as if the spiritual salvation or glorification of our life in God, there will give us this, this crazy idea, dreamy idea. Oh, man's imagination. And was just play in the garden, doing things around, uh, have your family around, around basically every day sing songs or singing together, just have a good time. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking. Now, do you see that here in this, in this strong reality? <coughs> Amen? Hallelujah. So why man think that is heaven life, heavenly life? If a heaven is ordered and ruled, and minister in such a way. So what qualify you for to be banished of those residents of this heaven? I mean citizens of this kingdom. You have no regard, no honor, no understanding, and desire to acquire, to possess this reality, to serve this reality. Mm -hmm. So we Christianity has a preached a totally wrong gospel and presented a wrong idea of what spiritual life is. Mm -hmm. With the spiritual life, the reality of that spirit life. Your life is not isolated as if it's a stern. Do, do, do you understand my point? You know, there's a flying or here or there as if it's just for your own good. It's, it's a humanistic, a humanly centered at least to see the list of what we are thinking. Amen? Hallelujah. But God is not saving man merely for their own well-being. That's included, absolutely included. Amen? And fulfill the utmost. Because that's all you're created for. But he, his idea is for his kingdom, for his order, for his ways, be known to all creation and perpetually be the governing order. Amen? Hallelujah. Be the way how things are being organized. Amen? Making sense to you guys? So, amen. Look at the beginning. Man was made and all creation made. That was never departed from God. So, we have the idea of democracy, God love and live, there is no difference between people and the state. This, anything that even challenges that, we think about the dictatorship, hierarchy, man oppressed one another, all thinking evil basically about this kind of status. And God said, you can't say the evil of this. This is my pure and righteous divine order. If you think evil of this, what a spirit you love. Why are you opposing, oh, I want my kingdom, oh, I want my people to perpetually enjoy my life and to share this kingdom with me? That's Antichrist spirit for sure, and the uh, false perception of who God is and his uh, kingdom how to operate. Amen? Right? It sounds very, very harsh, am I right? <laughs> it is true. <laughs> it is true. Here is in the Bible. Tell you that's man-made idea, <laughs> hallelujah. But we, look at the normal Christian doctrines. What's he thinking? This is a major tenet for the belief, brother. So, when we preach the gospel, we say the sinner need to get rid of, don't go to hell, go to heaven. This is what we promise them most, for the most part. Sorry. <laughs> Rather than pray for us. You understand my point? You know, that's a shallow, man-made, ideas of what it means to have a glorified life, internal life, in the power of the age to come, has to be shattered. 
the power of the age to come is not even about working miracle in this age. It's about this authority, this power that meant to perpetual and God has a holy people set aside for it, made holy for it. Go ahead. Lord, we reject man's ways and man's wisdom. Lord, we desire your way and your wisdom. Lord, we thank you for the order and the justice and the righteousness, Lord, the holiness that you not only, not just desire for your people, but Lord, that, that you demand, Lord, that you require. Lord, teach us and show us, continue to reveal this way. Lord, thank you for this beautiful pattern that you have shown and that you have and are revealing, Lord, all around us, in our lives, in in. In history, in nature, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, teach us to walk in this way and again to reject the ways of this world. Lord, give us all the grace needed mm. to, to accomplish and to fulfill, Lord, your purposes mm. in our own lives so that it may affect um, a, greater, a greater number of lives, Lord, mm. a greater order around us. Lord, we mm. thank you for this way. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to 14 chapter now. 14 chapter 4. So this people, another description in the same book. So they're standing among Zion and uh, said these are those who did not defile them with women. You see that when, when the mind of the translator is the unenlightened, he thinks about sexual or immoral immorality. <laughs> This is not what about whether you get married or not, or things like that nature. What it means to fall with women is a clear picture like the one who is a Babylon, the prostitute. Mm. So the defiled women here speaking about a woman is like a ye who were deceived in the beginning. There are certain images here represent a false wisdom, a false way to understand life, understand the happiness, and the purpose of life, if I'm making sense. The women here is more than a sexual uh, relationship. That definitely you don't want to be moral, immoral or commit idolatry, amen, things of that nature. But God did not say that you have to be eunuch or they have to be, what is the word when you? Celibate. Celibate, yeah, to, to hell this. Now, what is translating Catholic traditions? You don't mm -hmm. think it's a small thing, so. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. What today we struggle with this kind of a thinking. But we didn't understand. So what the here speaking about the spiritually purity, spiritual mean holy. Amen. In sonship. Amen. Hallelujah. They're not defiled and they keep themselves pure. Amen. Means that they not consider any other relationships in life but partner or become the bride of Christ. Become the to Christ. That's what it means. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that is far fetching. I can't expound that well <laughs> to round it up, but I just give a sentence. We don't have time to expound it. But look at this what they do, what they do. So they did not follow women till around. <laughs> they did not organize their own unit of life or purpose of life around. Then so they followed the whom? Where the lamb, where he goes. So they committed themselves to a different relationship. Discipleship, is it? And then they were purchased from among men and offering the first fruits to God. Offers and the first fruits to God. Who offered them? <laughs> Good question, right? So they can't offer themselves. <laughs> and the lamb. Took out the lamb. No lie was found in the remote. There were blimps. Talking about made holy, right? Made holy, set apart. This is a contest where the New Testament authors were thinking about. Mm. Amen? Hallelujah. How to be made holy is a set apart for something. Amen? Hallelujah. So that comes to my conclusion about a first kind of glorification. Mm. is made holy into something. That is Christ speaking about he was glorified into a priestly capacity. Turn with me to Hebrew, the first understanding glorification is being honored, privileged, set aside in a unique place in something. In this case, 
it's a fulfilled sonship or a appointed uh for you know like the word you know you have to be appointed you know so authorized the sonship in four chapter uh, in five chapter let's do this so in five four said no one take this honor or this glory upon himself he must be called by god as as aaron was speaking the priesthood honor or the glory of uh, honor now if they purchased the the, the garment become clean and then now they're ready to be garmented or closing christ what do you mean in the closing christ he has a glory in the priestly capacity amen god garment him and close him in glory and honor amen hallelujah so here let's just Aaron was so christ so we know the levitical priesthood have the priestly well garmented a different set of garmenting for even for priest means something amen hallelujah hallelujah in the outer court between the gate and the altar you dress one kind mm -hmm. before the altar amen and the inner core you dress one kind mm -hmm. in the inner core you dress one kind amen hallelujah and the only certain ones allowed to touch the our the incense amen you dress one kind amen when you able as a high priest now one year only amen to bring the incense into the inner inner in, in uh, holy holies you dress another kind there are different ways of dressing different ways of uh, Ministry, amen. Hallelujah. If not, they have a different accessibility of proximity to the presence of God. In this case, represented by the mercy seat on the ark of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. I make it sense to you, amen. Now, you have each one has to be sanctified and made away through the blood, purchased by the blood. In a sense, I make it sense to you guys. I don't want to expound this too much, but look at this how Jesus Christ then opened the way for us. Mm -hmm become the pattern for us. Here's speaking, he didn't take this on himself. He has to fulfill all the righteous requirements of made himself holy. God made holy him holy. And the Father, he died, he resurrected, he took the key of his and death, and overcome all authority power made the shame of the shame of them said, you can't touch me. Amen. I'm done. You all come on to my feet now, so you know, and make a way. I'm going to the throne of God. Then he sat down. When he sat down, God said, declared to the whole creation, He's, let's look at this, <laughs> when he declared. So, Tim, read for us. So, Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming the high priest, but God said to him, What the glory? Of becoming the high priest. Yes. So when Jesus in, Revel uh, in, in John 17 said, Father, he prayed for the disciples, the high priest of prayer, mm -hmm. we call it, glorify them with the glory you have given to me. Mm -hmm. Priestly glory. Is he talking merely about resurrection life? Mm -hmm. Which is the second glorification I want to talk about. Because this one is compatible with resurrection the glory. Mm -hmm. Eventually. <laughs> They have come to there's there's conversion together. Presently you now see this in manifesting. Mm -hmm. Amen. But in the days to come, it will be manifested. It will be just like him, John speaking. What it means? Merely body be transformed? No, you'll be like him in this uh, capacity, mm -hmm. in this set apart sonship, amen? In its full ministries, in full entrustment, amen? Hallelujah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm making sense to you guys. Now this is going to unlock all the scripture for you if you really understand. Mm -hmm. Man speculate a lot. Try to gain a little bit of promise, a little bit of understanding, a little bit of revelation. But we fall feet the real one message, one faith, one hope, one call. That is the one gospel, one life, one glory. Amen. God gives to us in one life a son. Sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah through Christ Jesus. That's, that's where we're sad. That's why Paul said it's one faith, one hope, one Father, one order, one Lord, one Lord. <laughs> one, 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 one. What it means? There's not many blessings scripted there <laughs> to scatter you around. 
Rather, when you concentrate on the one thing, Amen. How you seek ye first the kingdom of God, this righteousness, this establishment of life righteousness, then everything will be ending up to you. Why? Well, God give all the creation for this. God set all the experiences of man with him for this. God give created angels and all creation for this. God give his own son into the world for you to have this. Amen. Hallelujah. And God will add you with all kinds of blessings and gifts if you need it, if you want to get this. Amen. Hallelujah. And all our struggles, all our temporary setbacks, our temporary sufferings, and in no comparison for the glory will be revealed to us. Mm. That's what's the contest. Amen. Amen. It's not just to have a blissful, blissful life in heaven ever after. <laughs> Amen. But for this, amen, for this, you see the conditioning of that kind of life? What, who is really centering? God will make you happy, basically. God is serve you, your end. That's antithesis of who God is. You to serve God. But He don't oppress you, He fulfill you. But to, to make you the center of everything, the end of all fulfillment. That sounds very, very much dangerous to me. <laughs> and you want to condition God? He's dealing to you based on that, but that most Christian has a built relationship with God based on the sorrows or happiness based on this calculation. That's a word sad. Therefore, they never really died to themselves, to the whole way of life. So eternal life projected as a continuation of the betterment of this life. God said, that life has to be canceled. <laughs> Come back to my original plan. And my son made all the sacrifice, paid the price. So be purchased me. Amen. Be attuned for me. Be made holy for me. Then I will give you a new life. Everything is new. Behold, the old pass away. Amen. Him just raise up your hand and bless. But I think this will wake up a lot of Christians up if they have a ear to hear. And save a lot. Because that is death trap. <laughs> Lord, let this truth go out like a great sound. Lord, to shake, vibrate, ring out, and wake up the hearts, the minds, the spirits, and the souls of your people. Who they really are. Who they are really called to be. What they are to become. And who they are to represent. Lord, you said that all creation waits for this re revelation. Lord, and that's not just the time that you force to happen, but yeah. when there is a revelation in the you heart of close people. You got close the IOC vision and it comes from the Word. This is for somebody, some, many people maybe. So they know that they need to change the course. At least they need to further walk with God, see more clearly what God has for them. Go ahead. When your people wake up from the dead, from the, the way and the spirit of death. From the shadow of death. From the grave of the slumber in the spirit. From the veil that covers the hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. This is the veil that you tore apart, Lord. Mm -hmm. When you entered in this way. Into the heavenly courts to offer your body, mm. your blood, mm. that a new living way of life, mm. that which is liberated from death, free from its constraints and its strings and its sting, mm. but having an overwhelming and overcoming force of life. Lord, let your people rise up in this reality. Amen.
Tell, tell us what you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue to pray. Hallelujah. No, I hold up your hand and pray. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is mightily moving. The kingdom of God is indeed forcefully at one thing. Mm -hmm. And um, as, as He's blessing us with many things, enlarging us many things in this earthly life, may we never f uh, forget the heavenly things is more important mm -hmm. as they are easy to grasp. Amen. Hallelujah. For the ways you carry yourself in this life will, will be the perfect channel, perfect vessel for the things from above to come to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And things are easier, much easier when you, when you do things from His grace, mm. from His anointing in a sense. Amen. Hallelujah. Because all forces of darkness had to give away. All disorderly ways of life will have to yield to the gracious ways of God. He's, he's most powerful, he's gracious. Means you can afford to make a mistake. Because you, your, your life is holding in a different way. Amen, hallelujah. Let, let me explain to you. If you're on the water, you hardly the braze, you're, you're, you're padding a mode, right? And a brace will come back, you know, continue to say that, oh, I can never really live out of the water because <laughs> how to get a brace? Get a brace, you'll praise God. God, thank you, you know, <laughs> I'm not <enough> job. <laughs> but you, you know, our life is all continuing in the fear of death, fear of this. You can think, you can think not otherwise. Okay, I can walk on water, I can breathe freely. The man, hallelujah. Now, a different story, Peter walk on water, he's a stumble, whoa, I, I need to keep, keep going on, you know, so I don't fall down, you know, so he had a different struggle, you know, he might fall down for a moment, but he know he can come back quickly, you know, so, so he never worried about the breathing, he's a priest, he's not, a, oh, I, I can breathe, you know, so, his struggle is not about the breathing anymore, his struggle is said, oh, man, I get my shoes wet again, you know, so, be careful, you know, don't sink again. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, okay, his struggle would be, oh, somebody is there ready to get out, you know, I can lay in a hand to bring it out. Amen? Hallelujah. Is that, it's a different struggle. Amen? I mean, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's fully sympathized with the one who is sophisticated on the water and can get out. That's why he was walking on water, trying to just see what others up. Said, I pray for us. I want to release that power to you. In the spirit, Lord, we thank you. But some said, "Why we don't feel anything?" Well, God's life is about the changing perspective, the mind, change, renew the mind. If your mind renewed, the power, the authority comes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! And until your mind fully agree with these things, have faith and want it, eagerly desire it. Say, God granted, God cannot release it, the power to you. Amen? Therefore, you have to have faith and, and, and a sincere um, claim, you know, while in mind, take it what? By force. Amen? You're not there, said, oh, I'm not there. Well, God want you to take it. I mean, not foolish to take it, presumptive take it for your own imagination take it, but God said, here's the revealed truth. You can walk in this way, in this kind of freedom, in this kind of capacity. Well, listen, he, in this place, he will answer your call. Amen, hallelujah. And the more you have, the more what? The more will given to you. The more you can offer to others. The more it's e much, much easier. Things become easier. Because the human struggle, most of the struggle, is in the spiritual realm, in the emotional realm, in the thought realm, then translating the relational realm. You know, so I'm sorry, you know, so matters, decision making. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I look at uh, no one. If no one not on good terms with me, I need to do a lot of work to work with him to make a simple decision. We don't have a relationship 
or we have honestly good relationship maybe. But if we have a relationship, we have a, a easy understanding, we are familiar with one another desire. I don't even see a word. He already done the things I desire to do. I didn't even express it. He already doing it. Or if I had an honor to him to do it, he will quickly, oh wow, I want to know what the son thinks, what he had accomplished. He will, oh, he will not struggle with me. Amen? So which is easier? I build a relationship, I build a contest with him, eliminate all the other kinds of struggle with him. Now this one I build with him take maybe five minutes. And for me to come to him to eliminate all the barriers, all the misunderstanding, you know, try to sort it out to get things done, maybe take me two hours. <laughs> so here, <laughs> why not I spend one hour to build a five minutes relationship with him rather than try to manage the life and never good on terms and there's no feature to begin with because this this thing's getting done, we used to carry a soul grip in our mouth. We said, well, oh, that is a young man is so difficult. Or he would say, that's old oh, man, is it so harsh to me, <laughs> whatever. You know? I don't want to work with him. I don't want to talk to him. But I spend one hour, five minutes, seed and facilitated everything good in life. Why I limited the struggle of two hours have a relationship, did a little bit of thing, and the relationship totally damaged. Tell me which is your choice. <laughs> Tell me which is more important in life. Oh, I had to do this, I had to do this. Yes, yes, yes. But those things need to be done most of the time is an overspill of something of a non established We all have a great responsibility. I'm talking about a different way of thinking. Can I do this? Yes, you can do this. Pray for us, brother. Yeah. Lord, we, we do want our minds and hearts to be transformed, Lord, to recognize the heavenly perspective and the heavenly mindsets, Lord, and to to shed all the, the earthly ways, earthly ways of humanistic ways of thinking of things. Lord, we, we want to rise above Lord, we thank you for making a way for us to do so. Mm. Lord, give us the grace and the, the strength to, to take hold of it. Mm. Lord, to grasp it, Lord, as you give it, not on our own, but as you, as you make the way. Lord, may we in turn and in step um, strive forward with, with great conviction, mm. with, with, with strength that comes from you. Mm. Lord, and with force to, to receive and to take that which you have given. Mm. Lord, to possess that which you desire for us to possess, mm. not the, that which we desire for our own good, but mm. for yours. Mm. Lord, we bless your name in this way. In Jesus' Amen. name. God's wisdom and God's way is the most practical. You, you, you saw into it, you persisted it, it's the fruits of life is inevitable. The harvest of life is inevitable. It's also a word very interesting, it's reproductive. Because because it's good, you know, it's powerful. He's also happy to pour out his his blessing, his grace upon it. So you don't have to do it your own. <laughs> you know, it's just very easy. Be a teacher, be a minister this way. It's easy. He's the one to do it. He's the one promise he will also never um, never abandon you. Now you are face resistance. People are willing to listen, to yield, to learn, you know. So, and the Lord said, that's not your job either. <laughs> you go to the ones I sent you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who persecuted you, I will take care of them, you know. <laughs> but the, well, though he make way for you, basically, you know, it's like water, you know. So, <laughs> I don't go to hard places. You do high for me. So. <laughs> I can't go there. I allow to my capacity. <laughs> I go to the low places where, where people need me. And my conscience is clean. I'm just water. I was being my water. <laughs> yeah, man, it's your choice. You want to be a valley? Well, I'll fill you up. <laughs> Let's see how big you are. <laughs>
But if you want to be a mountain, well, you know what? I will recede far long, far away, you know, because I don't go there. Mountain build it up like this. And man, the water don't go there. The water go to the low place. No, do you see anything? Uh, while spraying earlier, I did see vision of a. Uh, so it seemed like a really big seed, mm. almost similar or had a resemblance of like a coconut, which I guess coconut's basically, what is a coconut? Is it a seed? Or is it just like it's a- It's a fruit, I'm not sure oh, if it has fruit. a seed in it. But Something like that. I mean, most fruit does have seed in it, but I don't know that that's a seed bearing fruit. Well, that's that was the interesting part of this vision because I saw this, seed that was very similar to a coconut and when it was opened up it's it, beet? yeah it's like, like, it okay, like okay. Size yeah of, yeah um and when it was opened up like cut in half it spilled out uh smaller seeds that were packed within this oh, bigger seed so, you know the biggest seeds okay um it was a very simple vision but mm. that's what i saw mm. that's christ he is a seed but he he give our life meaning you know so mm. he become the father of that life I mean, in a sense, quick, quick, okay, Father, progenitor, basically, a life giver. That's what it means, a life giving spirit. Let's look at this. Uh, continue, Tim. Can you read it? So my setting. I'm sorry, we did a uh, little bit, but let let's what is the word called a digress or something? <laughs> 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 the glory, glory. So there are two glories. One glory is God's honor you into a certain capacity with an honorable position, privileged place. I mean, that's one. The other is your body will glorify into his glory, in his spiritual life, in his spiritual form of life. So that's another glory. So this actually has to take place as one. I mean, your spiritual being, you'll be glorified into a, a glorified spiritual form of life. But it's also correlate, if I can say to you, mm. to the entrustment God for you. So that's why there are different light there, represent different glories, because they have different capacities. Amen? Hallelujah. And the Peter, the other place speaking about, it's like in the, in the darkness, a little light, a candle, then in the morning star, then become a noonday sun. Amen? Hallelujah. And another place is speaking about the sons of God were like songs, you know? So brilliance will somewhere. So you know, like Daniel mentioned, basically, you know, but like songs, they're gonna read in the God's glory. You know, uh, and songs are God's glory. Amen. And uh, our glory is the Father and the Lord, but the songs of God is also the Father's glory. Amen. This is the concept, even in the Old Testament. Amen. Hallelujah. Please go on. But God said to him, "You are my son." Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. From what? From death. But that's only a confined place. Amen? Hallelujah. He's seeing into something. He's glorifying into something now. Let's see, look at that. Good. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Mm. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So he was made what? Perfect. That's eating concept of most Christians. Mm -hmm. Christ is always perfect. Christ never sinned. That's the idea is never sinned in their own morality, say that. So, but talking about sonship, the life into the fullness of God designed for the son, it's a different story. There's a pattern life in this, which is the seed. And that pattern, the pattern of that life is one of transformation. There you go. And submission. There you go. You it's have not to go one through that this. never Power off. Off. Yes. Uh, didn't have to be transformed. It's one that had to be transformed. Had to be transformed. That's how he was made like us. Because he had to be transformed in every way. Else. Yes, yes, yes. So we can be transformed like he is mm -hmm. in every way. Amen. That's the whole purpose why he became a man. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
he became the source of sal eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Well, let's talk about Trinity's doctrine. I'm not against Trinity concept, okay? Mm -hmm. So the equity for God, the person's God, I fully agree, and the operation, I fully agree. You know? So I, I don't know what they teach, actually. So, so let me just, I, I don't against the ninja premises of uh, the Trinity, but one thing they're totally missing is the Son is designated by the Father to become a high priest. Then the whole thing about the Son, that's his life. That's what's exactly why he was a Son and sent to man and become a, the product and the introduction of the Middle of the Holy Spirit. It's totally missing this argument. So what use for you to prove Christ is this deity? And what is use for you to say the Holy Spirit enjoyed equal standards with the Father and the Son? It's useless. Mm -hmm. It's a dead doctrine. If this, this way of life is become a, only a remote concept for us, so we made Jesus by this doctrine to become idols, unapproachable, a figure on the cross. We turn to figure like Mary to say that Mary is, is going to help us. Jesus Christ is remote. We can't do that. We, we can't approach him. He's too holy. He's too far away. Mary is, is compassionate. You know, he knows how to manage Christ. So much talking. So <laughs> Mary can help us. Give me a break. Jesus Christ come in human form. Understand human weakness. Identify with your life so that you can trust his uh, we trust his provision, trust his saving power to be just like him. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And that word the Spirit comes in and says, okay, you believe the Son. You believe the one was sent by the Father. I will come with anointing to empower your life and to enlighten your life. Amen? I will reveal the Father's Son to you. I will give you the reality of heaven. To our lady, no future reality called the dead that sins. Patrons of faith, to call. The dead! It's a worship of the dead! It's idolatry! It's a forbidding the Bible! Do you understand? I'm sorry to be... I'm talking about the Catholics! That's a dead bone of my dead man. Dead, and not Christ even. Not Elijah's bones. Dead man's bones put in this... Uh, Beautiful place, build a church forever. The year in year, out, millions come to one who receive a blessing. You receive a curse. Do you know that? That's a curse. But God despises those demonic setups against the very thing He said, "Do not make man idol." Mm -hmm. Those are demonics. Those are demons thinking like that. Amen. Hallelujah. But we have no problem with it. I, I, I was shocked to hear the stuff in the beginning because I never know exist. Let me ask you, what the soul of the sin in the in the end of the story? He called Samuel up. Samuel said, "You, you, you wicked man!" <laughs> so, but that's God forbidding those kind of uh, approaching spiritualities. It's a forbidden way. It's a witchcraft. Amen? It's a sorcery. Amen? Hallelujah. It's unclean spirituality. Full of demons. Do you, hear, you hear me very clearly. You will not receive a blessing. You will receive a rebuke and an internal judgment in the end. What God will tell you, this is how I will face you, say, what do you really believe? I have a book to you. I have the Holy Spirit will about for you. I died for you. This is the thing I want you to touch and persist. You're going to get close to me. Such a man is never want to live a holy life or live a fullness of the real life of God. It's a self serving. Why you go there? Don't want to be touched. Receive a blessing. Who is really being blessed? The part of the ideas or the passions or the ways of life the Lord said it has to be crucified. 
to put to death. Now here you expect God to bless it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm speaking. I'm speaking to this blind people. Weak up. You know, so they cannot bless death. Amen. Hallelujah. Let death bury the dead. You can follow me. Amen. That's Christ call. Amen. Tim, rise up. Pray for us. Well, maybe some will be afraid from this. If I see one soul, Amen. it's worthwhile our passion. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. This is see one soul, but the millions, millions, billions. In this day, are still stuck with this kind of thing. They have no problem with it. Lord, we pray for the freedom, the release of your people, Lord, to the bondage of death. Lord, the covenant that was made with death. When you have come and offered the covenant of life, eternal life, a whole nother kind of life, Lord, we pray that this veil be torn away, mm. that the grave be overcome, mm. that death and Hades find their place in your judgment, mm. in the fulfillment of your word. Mm. So, Lord, we proclaim in this day the release from that bondage yes. of the captives. The spiritual death. Lord, even as you led the captives in your train, mm. the train of your glory, the fullness of your plan, mm. and the fullness of your desire. Mm. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. Come with me to Titus. For this, I want to seal this down. So no one accuse us as if we try to be harsh to anybody or to try to project our ideas just because we want to be controversial. We said you have to be saved into this hope that we just present you, the hope of glory in Christ. Any other glory, any other blessing is for sure, or even can be a deception. Of this, Paul instructs with ties it was a great, great admiration. So, in, in I'm sorry, in uh, admonishment in three, in two chapter, uh, three chapter, three words it said, and one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived enslaved by all kinds of passion and pleasures. Talking about a we of a, a life of death, but in the kernel mind. We live in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared. Made manifest. Made manifest, a great, great. So he saved us, not because righteous things we have done, because it's mercy. He sealed us from the washing, there is a key, washing of rebirth every noodle of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Often we think it is one and the same. So evidently here, Paul clearly understood the Holy Spirit, what? Give two things. You know, speaking there are certain brothers, I love them dearly, deny the sanctification of the Holy Spirit, deny the work of the Holy, Holy Spirit, the sanctification. Now here Paul clearly said rebirth is not good in you and you have to be sanctified. Amen. How are you sanctified? By the word of God. By the pure word of God. That's pure word of the word of God. So the washing, purification, sanctification, of rebirth, one, born again, saying renewal. Huh. What does that mean renewal? Your mind be transformed. That would mean renewal. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So there are two operations. Whom he poured out on us generally through the Holy Spirit, uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord, speaking the word the Holy Spirit here. So then having been justified by faith, by his grace, I'm sorry, we might become heirs, everything we said, having the hope 
of eternal life. What eternal life? This is hope of glory. This is eternal life. Amen. This is a trustworthy thing. I want to say Paul understood how this can be easily challenged, divided from man's understanding or presentation of the gospel. So he said, this is a trustworthy thing. <laughs> I trust me, visit me, also <laughs> listen to me. And I want you to stress these things <laughs> so that those who have been trusted in, tr trusted in God, who have trusted in God, may be careful that they will themselves to do what is good in this life. These things are excellent and profitable for everybody. But avoid. <laughs> Consciously you not know, one thing, avoid some kind of things. Let me tell you what is avoid. Avoid exactly the things I just told you. Avoid foolish controversies and genealogies. Argument and quarrels about the law. In this light, maybe those new scriptures, New Testament scriptures. Because they are unprofitable and useless. Warn the YC person once. What is that? Once. As says Paul. He tell Titus, a young man, to do this. Every Christian tried to love one another in the way that is totally unprofitable for the body of Christ for one another's relationships. Because we are colonel. And we don't put God's interest in the first place. That's the problem. And Paul warned again and again that don't yield, don't compromise on the standard. Don't let the devil sleep in the back door to destroy the whole thing. But we continue to give allowance. Give a demon the wrong. One year, I'm, I'm going to share a little testimony with you. One year, this wonderful young people, he even knows it. I don't know John knows before John, you guys, in my life. Wonderful sister. The, the, the gentleman was, the brother was, was be a doctor in Texas, the University of Texas, you know, learn to be, I think, a trained theology, try to be. Um, the, 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 the wife was, was, was assistant to, to call this apologetic horse. When the power of God changed their life, they began to believe the Holy Spirit, we engage some relationships. I think John, you know, know that, know them a little bit. So this young lady was touching called the Pensacola Revival. She was, uh, she was one of the leading girls that, uh, you know, delivered many demons, basically. So then she fall into the then damage, the shattered, she, she come into rationalization, so try to believe God. So the parents were good people as well. The father was a judge, the mother were a kind person, the sweetest person you ever met. The father's an elder in a big church. But the you know Bible kind of church. So my point is speaking. This this young lady have a heart for the Lord, and everyone wrong love her and try to serve God. But she calling this this frenzy of things. She bad around. Eventually wounded. Bad thing happened to her life for sure. But the time enough to a place that she got trust actually stay with me privately. That was not possible for her before she met me. So we, 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 we discussed uh, many times and stressed there's the power of God that we have return. This is undeniable. And uh, so, but one night, the struggle, one night, uh, the, in the middle of the night, the husband called me, and, oh, please help us. I said, what's up? This is said, oh, I just, you know, a demon is running in our home. We're all scared, we just power behind the door, you know, so. <laughs> And so that's after the young boy was, was delivered. Uh, I don't know, quite, you know the sequence now. You know, he's there was a young boy. He's a young boy, four years old, was deaf in the, and uh, prayed demon, with demonic things. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I, I said in the middle of the night, I was like, said, what are you doing there? I said, oh, we're hiding, hiding behind the doors, you know. <laughs> I know what we call, call you. Said. I said, are you crazy? I was instantly being, become uh, upset with this young, young man who was a scholar in the Bible. <laughs> Wife, children, 
being tormented or scared by this demon. <laughs> He, he, he would hide behind the doors. I said, are you crazy? They said, get out of the door. I chase him out. <laughs> can I do that? I said, sure you can. This is your host. Don't let demons run on your horse. <laughs> Don't listen to demons. Don't let go shit with demons. Mm. Cast them out. The only job for you, if you want to grow in spiritual authority power, never give a let to demonic things. Amen. Hallelujah. Rather the Lord said give us clean strength, expose them. Make them terrified. Expel them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody rise up and pray for us. No, I pray for us. Don't compromise with them. Don't let them destroy your life. Don't let them pervert your life. What up, your hand? Pray. They come to rob, destroy, and so seed of disunity, so destroy the whole meal, basically. Eventually your children, like the young lady's child, weeping before the clinic, said, what I do, a child? He can't hear. Oh, it's a demon. <laughs> you allow it to happen, to play around. You put your children in danger. I don't want them to have miracles. I'd rather never have that kind of miracle in my life. <laughs> I want to study and grow in the good with the Lord. That's the wrong kind of struggle. I don't want every day facing the test him out. I want to grow in the Lord. Amen? To build my heart on the firm foundation. Beam on the beam, stone up the stone. Amen? Then bring us to my shelter. Amen? Hallelujah. Give them food and water. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Let them share the things of life. If they don't want it, what has to do with me? What the fellowship has to do with you? This is a holy requirement of the servant of the Lord. Hear me out. You want to grow? This is how you do it. Don't never, never let it go. Never compromise. This is how you become a holy people of God. This is how you call the difference. This is how the devil going to come against you at the same time, you're going to bring terror to the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it will come to you over. Go ahead. Lord, I pray that we would never take Lord's spiritual truths Lord, into a physical and worldly understanding. Lord, truly to those who are spiritual, our thing, all things are spiritual. So Father, may we not fall away from this path of understanding Lord in the perspective we have of our own lives Lord in the environment both spiritual and physical around us Lord I pray that in this way we would truly be deeply rooted and firmly planted in this foundation of understanding Lord the, the foundation of your Holy Spirit in our lives Lord, I pray that um, in this way as well, we would have a divine courage, Lord, to Lord, encourage ourselves, Lord, and others around us, Lord, by the power of your Spirit. Lord, I pray that in this way, our spirits would never, Lord, be rejected in a time of hardship, but that we would approach all things and more than just a physical understanding. Mm. Lord, in this way you would bless each one. In mm. Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me. I'm going to read on this, <coughs> this book. Did you read it from the top? Did it necessary for our group? Maybe so. Let's see. It is. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's do this. So, in, in the first chapter of this same book, speaking about the the ability of elder must hold firmly to the trustworthy truth that has been taught 9 verse 
Manan Titus, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refuse those who oppose it. Mm. We don't see that often. Mm-hmm. And refute. Refute is not a good term. I'm going to have an open discussion or a good, a good fellowship with you about it. Let's, let's share our understanding. I agree with you. you know, I disagree with you. I agree with you. We disagree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And what is the sound doctrine? Yes, what is the sound doctrine? Mm. And if you want the leadership in the house of the Lord, this you must do. This is the first investment. Amen? This is your holy duty. For this reason you are chosen. Not because we are kind, we help people. We have resources, so we are just charitable. No, it's because <laughs> We well, also don't want to be religious, and, but Paul was very much guarding his teaching, the pure milk. Intense, uh, but there are many rebellious people. What the nature is that? Rebellious people. Listen, listen, let me repeat it three times. Rebellious, rebellious, rebellious. That's it. In God's sight. You're rebellious. That's it. Mm. You can't argue away with it. Deal with it. Mere talker deceivers, mm. especially those of the circumcised group. Why did that? The Jews, the Jewish mind. They basically you know, argue with Allah to later on speaking. But what about today? It's evidently every beer in Christian circle worse than these people do. <laughs> because they don't have fear of the Lord. They don't really live a word disciplined life. Those days, the people at least have a culture we honor the elders. Am I talking about things in an orderly way? What do we do today? Everybody is on own charge. And nobody holds them accountable. 11 said, they must be silenced. What do they do? Mm. What, what, what the young man ties to the do? Silence them. But today, when we do these things, there's a little bit measure to practice it. What, what, what the response from God's people is? All offense. It's oppressive. It's controlling. It's not kind. Mm. Whose side you are, may I ask? Who are you serving? What do you care about in life? What do you want to do with the future of your life? In the sight of God, what is, where are you? What are you doing? When you side you know, with the rebellious attitude that rebellious ways. Brother, help them to recognize their fault and turn them around. That's your duty. If you don't have passion for all that, don't under your grievances of the Lord. Your grievances are false, apromatic, unworthy to be mentioned before the Holy God. Get your knees down. Pray through. Make sure the judgment, the grievances are from God and not from the devil. I take issue with that. I want to clean up the cap. Make sure you know what inspired you. They're not demons. You stand up, pray, brother. Kyra, we need to move on. Oh, yes. We will bring everything to the sink of God. This is the sink. Because everything defiled. Are we being called out, blessed by God in order to repeat those little games again? Like that young lady being tormented in the end? They don't know what's good or bad in the end, I believe. That young couple pretty much lost. Lord, I pray against the spirit of rebellion. 
Lord, that has hidden itself deep in the hearts even of your own people. Lord, being covered in many ways by a religious facade, uh, a pres presumptuous spirit as well, and a vain imagination. But let every one of them be exposed and cast out in Jesus' name, even in our own midst, in our own hearts and minds. Let all the dark places receive the light of your glory and truth so that all the darkness might be expelled and that you may be all in all. Mm. In Jesus' name. Mm. 11 says, it must be silenced. It's not, it, it's not an option. There's no tactic. Is this a comment? Of, no. <laughs> because they are ruining. Why? They're like poison. They're ruining God's household, the household, by teaching things they ought not to teach. They ought not to teach. They never authorized to teach, never enlightened to teach. God never, the Holy Spirit's not with them, not send them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God's, there's no other. Yet this is a continuing the grievances of unmatured, pragmatic young people. You never miss. As if you had encouraged them to do otherwise. That's why I cut them off. This is against the will of God. There's a certain young man come to me after all these years, said, oh, you just try to build another following to teach, teach, you know. How you forgot what God revealed to you? Then I'm sent to teach. So you're going to tell me I can teach? What kind of mind is that? Who are you? How you muff? Said God told me you have to teach. Then here, come years later, because I begin to teach or begin to instruct, and said, oh no, you're not supposed to teach me. Oh, you're not supposed to even teach the body of Christ. Let me ask you, who are you listening to? Why are you listening to such voices? Now, I don't want to shame you, but I, I will tell you, if you have a here ear, hear me out. You are on word dangerous path. You touch the holy things of God. It's not personal. But to me, it's very personal. You don't know what you're talking about. So be silenced. I pray God's heavy head will discipline you a little bit. Terrify you a little bit. Flippant. Unstable. Unlightened. Out of the same mouth, the Spirit may bless and bless it. The next thing is the demons speaking. May I ask you, why you continue double minded? Why you have continue to have two persons in you? You don't discipline yourself. Don't bring the things that are the flesh, the devil, to the subjection to God's control. Amen? To the, to the elimination of the power of the Holy Spirit. Is that some fiction what it's about? Renew your mind is about? Is to get rid of those stuff. Uproot those stuff. It's very dangerous. Today, it created such a, a poisonous thing towards young people. You're not remiss. Our young people will be confused. The whole idea, the leadership is oppressive. Control it, not the beneficial, not put them before their, not serving them with their best. Where does that voices came from? Who bring those things in our midst? Who dishonored God's Islam leadership? I guess it may be me. Me is only one. But there are many. Many are the testimony, many are the evidences. God said, here what we have is a pure. It's a good, it's me. So receive it with attention in that list. 
and the matter produce something, they yield some fruits. I, I'm challenging something in the spirit. I'm going to have, have a breakthrough. Brother, you rise up and pray for us. Break it up. This Leos Dosia spirit, compromising spirit, has to be cut off. It's just, uh, the spirit of rebellion. It's a Jezebel spirit, basically. Manure, perverting, eventually out usurping the, the will of God and defile the will of God. The, want to lead God's people to the downfall. Because we don't care. Don't, in the bottom of the heart, we don't really care God's well-being for His people. And that's a problem, because that has to die in each one of us. Right. Lord, we do stand firm on the, the solid foundation that you have given. We stand against the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of Jezebel. Lord, we cut them off. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask that you give us the inner fire, Lord, to, to never be okay with those influences in our own hearts and minds and in those around us. Lord, as Paul wrote, they must be silenced. Lord, teach us to, to deal with these things in a pure and holy manner, to not take them lightly. Lord, to have your interests at heart and not our own. Lord, root out the rebellious spirit within each one. Lord, I confess, and I would say that in each one of us, there is more to be rooted out, more to be dealt with. Be kind, be reconsidered, be full of compassion, gentleness, when they repented! Not before that! That's the divine order! Go ahead. Yes, Lord. May, may we, each one, be quick to repent. Be quick to come to you, Lord. Lord, we confess that our ways, our mindsets, they're wayward. They often stray into a place of lawlessness and rebellion, Lord. Root them out. Lord, we cut them off in our own lives. Lord, may our children live in freedom from these things. May they even learn to deal with these things as we do. Teach us to be examples for the future generations on how to deal with the attacks and the persistent ways of the enemy that would seek to destroy, to rob, to mm. divide. Mm. Lord, we bless your holy ways. Lord, we ask that you continue by your spirit to sanctify us so that we may be holy as you are holy. Lord, bless your people and may their hearts of truth bless your name. Mm. Amen. Let, let's turn to this. This is a title thing. I, I'll do it a little bit. But dealing with certain things in our midst as a change. Amen. Hallelujah. God will change. Let me see something beautiful about what a God can do. God in the tabernacle, the fifth tabernacle is coming, right? So mm -hmm. he will do mighty, wonderful things. But before that, we've got to clean up the yeast. We've got to help the people of God in each tent to come to divine order, divine alignment. This is not something small. As a personal and narrow as our group it is, but this is a word, the power of God, the will of the will can be moved. Mm. It has to be put into perfect function. Then you can move it. I mean, if it's out of sync, you can just splinter yourself very quickly. I mean, so therefore, there will be this unifying alignment, the process. Why he do that? He has to bring the power of a sin and death to the light. Amen. <laughs> To deal with it, but uh, more important, you have to deal with it, this kind of rebellious way, lawless ways in the midst of God's people. That sounds good. <laughs> Number the instructor showed that oh, that's not matter. He's still young man. He still work God. He still love God. He's still doing worship. Da 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 da. Titus and Paul was not targeting people unbelievers. <laughs> Talking about the people within the rock of believers, they had to be entrusted 
with a pure message, with this holy entrustment to produce an orderly, a heavenly culture of the body. Amen? Hallelujah. How do they do that? They do with a force. Do not negotiate. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's look at this in Titus, in 13, now, when 13. This is testimony true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply. I mean, tell me how to rebuke somebody sharply. <laughs> sharply. <laughs> rebuke. Nobody like it. The one who give it, I don't think they like it. The one who receives it, I don't think they are good at <laughs> Like it. But it doesn't care. It doesn't matter we like it or not. It's not about that. It's something at the stake God said it has to bring to the right place. Amen. Has to be the crop place has to be trained out. Amen. Hallelujah. The high place has to cut it low. Amen. The low place has to raise it up. Saying I can walk on it. So prepare me the way. Get rid of the stumbling blocks. Amen. Get rid of the yeast. Clean up the thorns, the scissors, and easily overtake the whole field. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God did a lot of investment, did a lot of preparation for the fruit of work. We can't allow those things to destroy the whole blessings. So how much time I have? Uh, it's 11.25. 11.25. I'm going to spend 20 minutes then rather than. So there's a, rebuke them so that they will be sound in faith. The reason is not cast them away. The reason to save them, to bring them back. But they have to come to repentance. Godly sorrow. Amen? There's no sorrow. I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. That's absolutely not okay. Not okay before God. Not okay before me, if you're a leader. Amen? Hallelujah. That's exactly the things that you're going to well, take in with. Why? You are sent for this very reason. Sit up, brother. Pray for this. You are sent for this reason. You don't make a difference. You're no leader at all. Don't serve God. Just Go along with your easy life. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to take a responsibility? This what do you do? This must be done. Father, may we rise up as those set apart to become the fulfillment of your heart and your will. Then set a standard, Lord. A place or a position in life of that is judgment in itself Jesus said that he did not come to judge but he himself as your son representing your ways your life was the judgment he was the light and Lord you have called us also to be that light and let us do it without any shame without any reservation but with all confidence, strength, and boldness. Lord, first to deal with all the darkness within, and then to expel all the darkness from without. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. You guys set your mind aside. Pray for vision. God can show you vision. Amen. Anybody, pray deeply while they're listening. You know, the mind is made up strange. You know, it's very strange make up. We have spirit, we have mind, we have soul, we have a heart. We can engage different realms at the same time. Right now, the spirit of God is upon me to bring a message of correction and clarification because the devil is hard around this still to tie in weight. Many lives and the stake, we don't know about it. It comes the right time we need it to, 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 to expose the scheme of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. We're hard to explain, to put a finger on. The key is this rebellious, compromising attitudes going to destroy the work of the Lord in our midst. It so seed disunity and so seed disbelief. Eventually, Robert, the joy, the freedom, we even while we serve God. But no, listen, you're not serving them, you're not serving man. Amen. Hallelujah. You serving God. And God has a reason to don't volunteer, to don't agree with it, come to this things. That's okay. Yes, you're my friend, but I will not serve God. Talk about God with you. End the story. 
you can't tag along. I don't like death, death touch me. I don't like rebellion to represent me. I don't fellowship with demons. So therefore rebuke them so that they be sound in the faith. Mm. I will pay no attention to Jewish message to the commands of those who reject the truth. No attention. Mark a difference. To the pure, all things appear. But to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing appear. In fact, both their minds and conscience are corrupted. The claim to know God, see the characteristic, but their action denies Him, denies Him. They're detestable. Jesus is speaking about uh, the water, am I detestable? You know, walk hard or look warm or hard, something like that. Look warm, detestable, he spew them out. Until this crooked, uh, this crooked things, this, this undefiled things, is it dealt with, firmly corrected, bring back to the rightful state? Do you have anything to do with it? Can this serve together with you in God? Uh, the Titus was a young man, I mean, very kind hearted, like, a, like, a, like a Timothy was. They were gentle people, young people. But Paul was seasoned enough to know the danger of such people. He went through a lot. He knows the wisdom, how dangerous it is. So he gave a swear straight forward saying, said, hey, Yama, shoot them out. And uh, let's look at the target, two chapter from the beginning. You must teach what is a core with the sound doctrine. Teach all the man to be temperament, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith and love endurance. Amen. Hallelujah. What what Titus supposed to do? Teach the older women. Okay. So in the next thing, likewise, teach older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to what what is that? Much wine, much wine. I'm sorry, but to teach what's good. So he is teaching all kinds of people. The first from what? Older, gen older age, because they have more bearing on the council. Community. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who in the world a tithes can do that? <laughs> if he has no respect, no agreement from this community. Do we have that? I want to know how to teach. <laughs> he will teach many people, I believe so. Amen. Hallelujah. But know if you continue to appeal to all man's ways, because the existing culture is all man can be respected, all women, you know, listen to them, do whatever they think is good. What their idea about life is good. I mean, in a good way. About God, you know. <laughs> but the culture is unreformed by God. Their mind is not taught by the word of the Lord. Their ways, their ideas of life is totally alienated from the order and the vision of God has for his people. What do you do? Teach them first. Humble them first. Bring them to life first. Titus, do it. <laughs> and rebuke those who don't think this needs to be done. Bring them to the order of the Lord. Hallelujah. All of you rise up. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not think God's we are harsh. That's our problem. Think they are good. To set you apart. To save your family. Save your young ones. See whoever that are coming to touch. Let's just rise up. Pray. Anyone resisting things, speak evil of these things. Need to reconcile in the heart of heart what's really doing with your life. Why? Why? Now concerning the ones resisting this ways, in three 
9 said, A world of foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law. I don't engage those discussions. I'm not interested in your interest. Nidemans, don't talk to me about your understanding of scriptures. I'm there. I don't care. That's what Jesus said. You want to know spiritual life? Let's talk about it. Let's develop it. But you got to be like a little baby. Born again. And desire, craving for spiritual milk. This un we're unfortunate. Spiritual milk is with us. The great face God is with us. What normal people do? What do we do? That's going to be a challenge for many people. Now that's not my word to try to elevate myself. <laughs> There's a God, credible, prophetic people, amen? One after another tell, well, we have the living river, right? We have the tree of life, amen? <laughs> so why don't we pay attention? I'm just talking to somebody else, not in our circle, maybe. So. Why they stay around for a while and departed? Not my problem. Amen. Hallelujah. If the river is with us, the tree is with us, whose problem is it? Aren't you deceived like ye were deceived? The lesson to the devil? <laughs> That's your real problem. And why we do that? Pride. Pride with the left. The first thing God hates is what? Pride. Don't ever agree, endorse, happy with a prideful man. That's in you first. Don't, don't ever think that is good. <laughs> but don't ever give room and say, oh, I'm a friend with a prideful man. In the inner man, he's a pride. No, I'm not a friend with you. Leave me alone. Let me leave you alone. Because if I do that, who is looking? Who's going to judge me? Mm. I'll go to the humble, or broken, or willing, good lessons, you know? So, who want to seek God, to eagerly construct the life around the gods, and then the humble. We can never disciple anybody. If they in the heart of hearts say, you can teach me. <laughs> Only God can teach me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Have God teach you. <laughs> I'm word blown. <laughs> Let God teach you. Let's see where we're going. <laughs> because I can teach what? Just one lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not gonna apologize for that either because God what? Sent me to teach. I'm happy you're not listen to me. You don't waste my time. Amen? Hallelujah. We're blind. Beware we're raw with God and with man. In the end of the day, nothing really matters. You're going to all stand before the throne of God and be judged. All the polished ways, all the kasha ways, all our little sweet thinking, sweet arguments, sweet uh, pretensions will fall apart. God's fire going to consume everything. God's water is going to cleanse everything. He's going to bring the essence of everything, every relationship, every heart, every endeavor of your life to the throne and said, let me see what he made of. And the next topic is going to come is the judgment of the Lord. And you want to mend out God's judgment. In his stead, you got to have this in the heart of heart. He what is evil, love, what is good in God's sight. Do justice. Do justice. Love, truth. Help those who eagerly endear yourself, devote yourself to this love, truth. Love God. Not those who run around, pretend they love God. Amen? Hallelujah. Rather expose them. Rather narrow them down. Confront them. Give them a, a thick wall. Amen? Hallelujah. I heard them, you know, how you 
how you how you this man a a, a wild cow? You, you narrow him down, you know. <laughs> so can be slumbered. <laughs> you know, I think the I man you how do you cut the cow? You be the running and narrow him down. <laughs> Eventually the 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 beheading comes, the knife boom, you know, cut it off. That's my job. That's your job. Bring them to the narrow gate, narrow path. And make them hold the sun for us to God. And man says their life can resurrect it. Bring the life to God. Become a holy offering <coughs> unto God. And never apologize for this. This is your holy commission. This is a holy service. Amen. Tie this back a little bit. Let's refer to something. So you avoid a certain argument that you have another duty. Said, warn a divisive person once, once. Hold up your head. <laughs> Imagine you do it. Then warn him a second time. After that, what do you do? He said, I "Have nothing to do with him." Wow. That's a challenge to us, right? 